and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and ads to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for August 25. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, I already covered the best free new assets, and next one, I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Summer is coming to an end, and my Code Monkey Summer Bundle is ending just tomorrow. So if you want to pick up all my courses and all my games with one nice deep discount, then check it out in the link in the description. You can master C Sharp with my awesome course that includes interactive exercises. You can learn all about Unity and its 70 tools and features. If you're more intermediate or advanced, you can learn all about Dots and this really awesome tool stack. Then learn how to make multiplayer games. Learn how to make a nice Build Defender game. Build a game with visual scripting. Go through my recently released Unity 2D course. And play a whole bunch of my Steam games. Like I said, the bundle is ending tomorrow, so check it out in the link in the description. And my toolkit is also discounted as part of the Unity Best of Summer Sale. I don't know when this one is ending, but if you want to make better games faster, then check it out. Alright, so starting off with a tool for helping you with splines, it's called Spline Architect. There's a few of these tools around, and this one does seem quite nice. You can basically create splines in your scene. This one seems to use a completely custom tool, and not Unity's own spline implementation at all. This one has tons of options, lots of custom editor tooling. You can define the shape of the spline, the thickness at various points, you can move it around with a very easy to use handles, then you can generate a mesh along the spline, or just use it as a a path for some animation. For example, define a road with some cars on top, or some liquid going through a tube. The documentation and user manual are very robust and well built. If you need very natural looking environments, or something to guide your animations, then a tool like this can be quite helpful. Up next we have a fun one, a nice digit counter. Definitely a niche thing, but it is pretty fun. If you have number tags pretty much anywhere, kind of like a clock, maybe a countdown timer, maybe you have some kind of distance interface, maybe some EXP gained or a new level up, on any of those scenarios you can use this with all kinds of nice effects. Basically anywhere you have numbers you can use this to polish it up nicely. You can add all kinds of effects as numbers change. It looks much better to have this, for example, for the amount of EXP increasing in some kind of nice and mid manner, as opposed to just having it pop up instantly. The format is customizable, so you can have, for example, hours, minutes, and seconds, or just a number with some dots and commas. You also have full control over alignment, font size, padding, and so on. You can play around transition effects to make the numbers look right. So like I said, this one looks like a great polishing tool. Really excellent if your game has numbers of any kind. Then here we have one that is simple and quite useful, it is called the Hot Builder. What this does is quite simple, it lets you build projects, which usually freezes your editor while building, that's always annoying, but with this tool it doesn't, it basically builds your project in the background. So that's it, very simple, but also very useful. If you make lots of builds, or if you just have very long build times, if so then this simple asset can save you a ton of time. Once the build is running, you can simply go do anything else. You can find various build profiles, you can queue up multiple builds, estimate build size, run them in background, or even make some builds without even opening up Unity. So yep, really interesting, simple, nice tool. Next here we have another interesting visual tool. So this one lets you pixelate your scenes, but do it based on depth. Usually pixelate effects just pixelate the entire scene in a uniform manner, whereas this one applies depth to the pixelization, meaning things closer to the camera get more pixelated than things far away. This makes the effect look so much better. You have full control over how much pixelation exists on each level, and this whole thing is a post-processing effect, so it doesn't really affect your shaders. If you have a game with long, wide, open worlds, and you want it to be pixelated, then this tool I would say is a must-have. Then if you want to set up some timing logic, here is FX Chain. So this one is a tool to help you animate and set up timing on your scenes in order to build things kind of like cutscenes. It's an interesting animation system, it says that it's different, it says that it has no keyframes and no coding required, so I'm not entirely sure how it works. Apparently use some components and connect them in a way that will make them trigger one after the other. So maybe if you want to try out a different way of doing animations, maybe look at this one, maybe you will prefer this different workflow. And the asset page itself, that one also has a pretty fun theme song directly in the video. Up next, we have another simple but potentially very useful tool called the Body Poser. This one is like name implies, it lets you pose bodies. So this is super useful for level design. You can make your level feel much more alive by adding some dead bodies all over the place. Doing that manually, moving each individual limb is always quite annoying, it's a lot of work. Whereas using this tool, you basically just grab a ragdoll and drop it down, it will fall along with gravity and hit whatever objects are in the way. So the result is a very natural body position. Then you can click a button to remove all the physics components and you end up with a super performant body right on the floor. Like I said, really great for level design for some kind of post-apocalypse zombie game. Then if your game has shooting and you want it to be realistic, here is True Ballistics. This is a super performant system, it is built on top of dots, and the goal is for it to handle all of your projectile needs. But more importantly, make them very realistic. So if you shoot at an angle, it will ricochet. If you shoot upwards, it will fall down with a curve. If you shoot through some wood, it will penetrate 
penetrate through some layers, really contains lots of realism mechanics. It also contains a database of almost 400 weapons with all of their authentic ballistic data. It has a comprehensive material system and even some advanced effects. It includes an FES demo so you can try it out right away. Next for some debugging, here we have the Runtime Debugger Toolkit. This one is a collection of tools to help you debug your game. You can easily see the console or see some kind of slider to change the timescale. You can see the frame rate, you can see how much RAM you're using, visualize physics colliders and a bunch more. So it's one of those nice collections of tools that can be quite useful when optimizing your games. If you have performance issues, if so then a tool like this can help you find hotspots, of course when combined with the profiler. Then if you have a game where you want the player to be able to modify objects at runtime, here are runtime transform gizmos. Meaning these work while the game is playing, not in scene view but in game view. So this is the kind of tool that is essential if you want to give your players some kind of level editor for your game. It's a very capable tool with basically every gizmo you can imagine. You have normal move handles, you can rotate and scale, but then you also have collider and capsule handles. You have snapping to make levels easily. There's even a tool to drag and copy paste objects, kind of like floors and walls. So yep, this one seems like an essential tool for any kind of level editor. Or perhaps you want something super simple, something to pick up and drop objects on a grid. If so, look at this one. It does exactly what it says. You can pick up objects, kind of like a box, and then place it on various positions. But they are fixed positions. They are on a voxel grid. So you can place them on the floor or on top of a table. If your game is grid-based, then this can be quite nice. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity App Store for August 25. There's links to all in the description, and as bonus, you can use the coupon code MAKI10 to get 10% off your order. And also check out my own free NPDES on store. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.